Welcome to part two of our certification course. In this section we'll be talking about uh, a number of benign lesions and the root causes for them. We will um, begin by talking about the root cause. <clears throat> um, recent medical research has begun to uncover the cause of many of the dermatological discolorations and tags that we may be seeing and it goes to a compound called lipofusin. This is a cellular waste that uh, many believe accumulates uh, with age and it's a cosmetic issue and part of the natural aging process. It's a deeper issue and so the spots that we see on the surface are really an indicator of that deeper issue and it's, it's lipofusin accumulation. Now Lipofusin, as I said a moment ago, is a type of cellular waste that causes metabolic damage in the cell and slowly drains away cellular vitality. It's composed of brown pigment, oxidized proteins, lipids, and metals. The metals may be iron, copper, zinc, aluminum, manganese. And lipofusin is also found in some of the organs, such as liver, kidney, heart, nerve, brain, and adrenal glands. And it seems to fuel a cascade of what are considered age-related diseases and health issues. So if you have age or liver spots on a client, it may mean ultimately that lipofusin is accumulating in other organs. Lipofusin uh, is an age pigment then uh, found in, in additional tissue, tissue such as brains and the skin itself. It's not dangerous, it's merely a byproduct of other reactions that have already taken place. So you, you need to keep it in mind as we look holistically at the skin as well as the, the overall client health. And it relates to our other uh, spots that we'll be talking about um, in a moment. The first of which is solar lentigos or lentines. Now solar lentigos are very common dermatologically. Um, they occur mostly in, in Caucasians over the age of 40 and they involve basically the appearance of pale brown to dark brown spots. Um, they're also called liver spots or age spots. Um, they're flat, usually oval, and uh, they have just an increase in skin pigmentation. Um, the, um, they may be brown, black, or gray in color and most commonly they're found on the parts of the body, no surprise, that are exposed to the sun regularly. So this includes face, hands, arms, top of feet, shoulders, and upper back. Uh, they may sometimes look like cancerous growths, and, but age spots themselves are harmless. Uh, treatments such as lightening or removal are solely for cosmetic purposes. And uh, even with the treatments to remove, it's still best to uh, prevent the development of these spots by avoiding the sun or wearing sunscreen. Again, UV or radiation, uh, like many of the other uh, cosmetic issues that are treated, are the cause. Um, melanin accumulation is triggered by the UV light itself, and whether the, the UV light comes from the sun or from a tanning salon, it's the same. Next, we'd like to talk about actinic keratosis, and we'll spend a few slides talking about AK or actinic keratosis. AKs are also very common, and they occur when keratinocytes start to grow abnormally, forming scaly discolored spots. Skin patches formed by AKs may be brown, tan, gray, or pink, and they, they tend to appear on the parts of the body that get again, the most sun exposure, and again, the hands, face, uh, scalp, neck. And AKs are different from liver spots that we spoke about a moment ago, and that AKs may actually be what's called in situ, uh, meaning they're uh, confined to one location, but they can be um, uh, an early form of squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, this is uh, uh, somewhat low in occurrence, uh, I believe about 8%. Uh, at most, and, but it's something that you have to keep in mind as you look at um, what could be an AK. And if you're unsure at all, please have that uh, checked out by a dermatologist or a physician. At no time should an esthetician diagnose uh, such a lesion and treat it. 
Um, refer the client to the physician for a biopsy. Uh, this may be the safest way to go. Now, AKs are primarily caused by long-term long exposure to sunlight, and people at high, highest risk are those over 60, uh, fair skin, blue eyes, with a ten, uh, tendency to sunburn easily. They may have a history of sunburns earlier in life. They may have had high levels of sun exposure over their lifetimes. They may have the human papillomavirus, or HPV. Um, other more um, uh, rare situations are albinos who may have uh, a predisposition to AKs. Now, the causes, as we talked about um, a moment ago, mostly relate to sunlight. So reducing exposure to sunlight is the best way to prevent new AKs from forming. It also minimizes the chance, of course, of the AK progressing to some sort of um, cancer. So things to remember are always to use a high SPF sunscreen or wear long sleeve t-shirts and hats in bright sunlight. Avoid going out midday when the sun's the brightest. Um, and use sunscreen year round while avoiding um, tanning beds. Now some of the symptoms of AK that are worth mentioning are that AKs different from liver or age spots will form into thick, scaly, crusty skin patches, generally somewhat raised, and the di a, a diameter uh, traditionally about the size of a pencil, but again, could be smaller or larger depending on time of formation. There's a number of ways to treat them, which includes incision, excision, cauterization, chemical peels, phototherapy, and of course, cryotherapy using cryoclear. Um, the, um, the, the biggest take home message from this slide is that if you notice any changes in some of the spots you may have been seeing on your clients, such as hardening of the lesion, inflammation, rapid enlargement, bleeding or ulcers, these are all signs that um, the lesion may be progressing to something else. And it's a warning sign for you to send your client for further evaluation through their dermatologist or physician. Now next, we're gonna talk about melasma or cloasma, uh, which is the historical term. Um, melasma is derived from the Greek word melas, which means black or irregular. It's muddy looking patches, usually found on the face, across the upper lip and forehead. Women tend to develop melasma more than men uh, men represent only about 10% of cases to dermatologists. In women, it's usually caused by elevated estrogen and hormone imbalances. Um, again, we may see this oftentimes in women who are pregnant, uh, uh, knowing that there's a, a, a lot of change going on within the body. So these excess hormones uh, usually occur from uh, overproduction, uh, toxin stimulation, inefficiency in the natural hormone elimination process of the liver. So there could be any number of these. The melasma by itself is harmless. It is uh, purely the cosmetic issue that we're dealing with. And, it, and again, it's stimulation of melanocytes and the accumulation of the brown pigment uh, melanin. Uh, 40s and 50s um, is uh, often the time where you'll begin to see some of this. And uh, whereas in the younger population, as I mentioned, pregnancy would be the most likely uh, cause. Finally, in this section, we'll talk about post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This root cause is a little bit different in that PIH is generally the secondary effect of inflammation. Which, um, which affects the immune cells and the melanocytes in areas of the skin that may have been damaged by other kinds of trauma, disease, rashes, contact dermatitis, burns, allergic responses, injury, acne, or infections. Usually what you see is a, a raised, uh, darker, blotchy patch um, that remains after the trauma has occurred. Now, uh, in certain populations, Asians, for example, um, the PIH or post-inflammatory -inflamm hyperpigmentation may occur, but it, it may also self-resolve. Um, keep in mind also that some of the treatments that are done uh, traditionally in aesthetic practices, such as facial peels, dermabrasion, and laser, can also um, induce PIH. 
So uh, with time, the good news is PIH spots generally fade on their own, but if not, they may also be treated with um, secondary uh, methods such as cryoclear. This concludes section two, and uh, you may look to the test questions now. Thank you.